we're going to do day five of the novena of divine mercy in the name of the father the son the holy spirit amen O oh jesus eternal truth our life i call upon you and beg your mercy for poor sinners O oh, sweetest heart of my Lord, full of pity and unfathomable mercy, I plead with you for poor sinners. O oh, most sacred heart, fount of mercy, from which gush forth the rays of inconceivable graces upon the entire human race, I beg of your light for poor sinners. O oh, Jesus, be mindful of your own bitter passion and do not permit the loss of souls redeemed at so dear a price. Of your most precious blood O oh, Jesus when I consider your great price of your blood I rejoice in its immensity for one drop would have been enough for the salvation of all sinners although sin is an abyss of wickedness and ingratitude the price paid for us can never be equaled therefore let every soul trust in the passion of the Lord and place its hope in his mercy God will not deny his mercy to anyone. Heaven and earth may change, but God's mercy will never be exhausted. Oh, what immense joy burns my heart when I contemplate your incomprehensible goodness. Oh, Jesus, I desire to bring all souls to your feet that they may have glo glory, may glorify your mercy through the ages. Endless. Amen. From the diary of St. Maria Faustina Kowalska, 72. You expire, Jesus, but the source of life gushed forth for souls, and the ocean of mercy opened up for the whole world. O fountain of life, unfathomable divine mercy, envelop the whole world and empty yourself upon us. O blood and water which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus as a fount of mercy, for us I trust in you. O blood and water, which gush forth from the heart of Jesus as a fount of mercy, for us, I trust in you. O blood and water, water which gush forth from the heart of Jesus as a fount of mercy, for us, I trust in you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. As Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered on a Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy in us in the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy in us in the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy in us in the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy in us in the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy in us in the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy in us in the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy in us in the whole world. For the sake of a sorrowful passion, have mercy in us in the whole world. For the sake of a sorrowful passion, have mercy in us in the whole world. For the sake of a sorrowful passion, have mercy in us in the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of a sorrowful passion, have mercy in us in the whole world. For the sake of a sorrowful passion, have mercy in us in the whole world. For the sake of a sorrowful passion, have mercy in us in the whole world. For the sake of a sorrowful passion, have mercy in us in the whole world. For the sake of a sorrowful passion, have mercy in us in the whole world. For the sake of a sorrowful passion, have mercy in us in the whole world. For the sake of a sorrowful passion, have mercy in us in the whole world. For the sake of a sorrowful passion, have mercy in us in the whole world. 
For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and the sins of the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us in the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us in the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us in the whole world. Eternal God, in whom mercy is endless and the treasury of compassion inexhaustible, look kindly upon us and increase your mercy in us, that in difficult moments we might not despair nor become despondent, but with confidence submit ourselves to your holy will, which is love and mercy itself. And today is day five. Today bring me the souls of those who have separated themselves from the church and immerse them in the ocean of my mercy. During my bitter passion, they tore my body and heart, that is, my church. As they return to unity with the church, my wounds heal, and it is a way to alleviate my passion. Most merciful Jesus, goodness itself, you do not refuse light in those who seek it, of you receive into the abode of your most compassionate heart the souls of those who have separated themselves from your church and draw them into the light into the unity of the church and do not let them escape from the abode of the most compassionate heart but bring it about that they too come to glorify the generosity of your mercy eternal father turn your mercy your merciful gaze upon the souls of those who have separated themselves from your son's church, who have squandered your blessings and misused your graces by obstinately persisting in their errors. Do not look upon their errors, but upon the love of your, your own son and upon his bitter passion, which he underwent for their sake, since they too are enclosed in the most compassionate heart Bring it about that they also may glorify your great mercy 
for endless ages. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Before I finish up, I got a book this morning. It's called Fire Within by Father Thomas Dubay and St. Teresa of Avila, St. John on the Cross and the Gospel of Prayer in, in published in Ignatius Press. Now, why am I showing up this book? <laughs> There's a little story behind how I went to buy this book. Um, as people will remember, I was preparing to give a talk in Derry and then the, the talk didn't go ahead and, and I sent the, the talk off to somebody. I said, well, this is what I prepared. Very strange where our Lord was pushing it. And uh, uh, during the talk, I was going to recommend to buy this book because I had heard others recommending it, but I hadn't read it myself. But I said, look, I, I need to get this book. And anyway, we were having a, I was doing an interview with Mark McLean on his channel. And in our chit chat, I was saying, do you know what? Jeff? He held up this book. And I said, do you know, I was just going to buy that book, Mark. And you're reading it. I said, yeah, I'm, I'm reading this book. So the two of us somehow came to this book with separate directions. And Mark and myself. Now, so I'm going to embark on reading it. Um, what has been coming to me a lot in prayer and is union with God. Uh, Dom Columbia, uh, Columba speaks about it. Marmion, the, the blessed who I went to his tomb last year. And union, if I could put it into a very concise, very simple way of explaining union with God. It is deep, personal friendship with God. Where there is two-way communication. Somebody that loves us so much is not silent. It's not silent in our lives. But we have to learn the language of this union. Learn to perfect ourselves. You know, learn to give up sin and to embrace a conversation. Grace, if I could say grace, God's grace is a conversation. You know, read the Gospels, read, read the Gospels. Go to confession, go to communion. It's a conversation. It's a, conversa it's a back and forth conversation. That is what union with God is. And our Lord is very insistent to me. He said to me in prayer this morning, I want you to promote union with God. And I said, Lord, you've really missed the mark in asking me to do this. You have totally missed it. Can you please go out and get a nice bishop, a nice Dominican, and a nice Carmelite or somebody? And this is what our Lord said to me in prayer. He was very funny. He said, don't worry. You're not going to be able to do this. I'll be the one that will do it. You just have to be the messenger and talk about union with God into the church. Seriously, this is what he said to me. You're not going to do this, Robert. All you have to do is put, put the message out there. So this video might arrive to some soul looking at this video. And you'll go and buy the book. And you could probably be the great theologian in centuries to come to expand out this. Because there is no other. There is no other greater theology in the church than the theology of the experience of union with God. No other. No synodal process. The synodal process is bankrupt theology. Junk theology. If you read the documents in the Irish Synthesis, doc, uh, synthesis Report, the, it's, not, it's not feeding you. It's not feeding you. There is no other greater theology than to step into the experience of union with God and to, and to come out and speak about it and preach about it. You know? Our Lord wants to disciple us. He wants to help us. And he wants to have deep, intimate friendship with us. And so, and so I'm just promoting this because I know somebody's going to read it and you're probably going to be find it very beneficial. But one is grace. One is union with God. It's a deep, personal, intimate friendship with our Lord, with God. He wants to come and be friends with us. He wants you to set something aside so that he can take that place in your life. You know, he's jealous in a way. He doesn't like when we are kind of divided. Oh, Jesus, I'll give you 10% of my time. You, you know, that time on Sunday between this hour and this hour, that's for you, Christ. And the whole 90% of my week, well, look, do you know, I have responsibilities. No, you can have that conversation the whole day. You can be, 
I guarantee you, if you start in this, your temptations will, will go way down. Your, uh, your life will change. You know, interior, this interior conversation with God. Let it flower up. Let it develop. And, uh, and I suppose I just wanted to give that message to, to whoever needs to hear it. That's what union with God is. People wouldn't be leaving. We heard on the fifth day of divine mercy, people who have left the church. You, If you encounter Christ and have that friendship, somebody's mentored you, discipled you to to walk the, the, the way of perfection. Well, this is very strange. Another book I got today. I got the Spanish edition of Camino de Perfección de Santa Teresa de Jesús. I, I got it in Spanish. I just wanted to. It's just bizarre. I just wanted to compare the English translation and, I, and I'm fluent, fluent Spanish speaker. So I just got this. Our Lord wants to bring you into that Camino de Perfección, the way of perfection. He wants to bring you into a university of love. That's what prayer is, a university of love. My screens are flickering up here. That's very bizarre. <laughs> I don't know what's going on here. My computer is just lighting up here. <laughs> He wants to bring you into the university of perfection of, of, of love. He wants to perfect you in your love. And so I'm really encouraging people. Get this book. It's probably for somebody and that's watching this video. Get this book. And again, as our Lord said, it's not Robert Nugent, the blogger, that's really going to be able to teach you this. This is something that our Lord needs to do in your soul. You know, our Lord needs to do in your soul. You need to do what our lady is, is pointing us towards confession guys can you go and get good confession know what sin is do your good examination of conscience do a general confession examine your conscience every day um good communions use the sanctifying graces coming down in the church sanctifying graces and then enter the school of perfection the the school of divine love you know the, this this way of perfection it's a conversation so who wouldn't want a beautiful conversation with Christ? Have it. Have it. It's all there. What's the way to open the conversation with Christ? Love. Love greatly. Love. Listen to his voice. Love. That's it. He won't ask you anything beyond your capacities to do it. He'll just ask you to love. Love transforms. Read the Gospels. You know, he's, he's left bullet points. Love one another as I have, as, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Or love one another as I have loved you. These kind of basic things that are so basic, so simple. You treat somebody as you would have them treat you. And yet we are killing each other in wars. We're on the brink. We're on the very, very brink of a third world war. We are stepping in. You're going to wake up one morning with the headlines across all of Europe's media, Europe at war. Europe at war. The Third World War has begun. It's already begun a few years ago, but like, anyway, it's just a man, it just, it will be the headline. NATO attacks Russia, or Russia attacks NATO, or Poland, or whatever. Polish and French troops enter Ukraine. This is the headlines that you're going to see. <laughs> And no wonder Christ is screaming at us from heaven. Christ is screaming. Oh, don't walk into that abyss. You know, love your neighbor. Love your neighbor. If we were Christian, if we were truly Catholic, you would not have a war. If Orthodox were truly Catholics, I let me rephrase this. If Orthodox were truly Orthodox, <laughs> there would not be war. And if, the Cat if Catholics were truly Catholic, you would not have war. You would not have this Christian war that's unfolding in, in Ukraine. You wouldn't. But what you have is there the satanic push from the West, from Ukraine. No, you have to make them your enemies. They're your enemies. Let's fund billions and billions and billions of arms. And we saw the satanic influence in the White House on Easter Sunday. Need I say more from so-called Catholic president who gets communion? What he does, he gives. Our Lord, you take second stage. 
the wokeness. We need to promote wokeness in the White House. Um, anyway, I digress. Pray for the church. Pray for these times. But I just wanted to kind of inspire you a little bit today. Uh, well, our Lord wants to inspire you. It wasn't me because I didn't have this idea to do this video. It was him. God bless you. Take care. Bye bye.